I always wanted to get into some sort of sports broadcasting. Even as a young kid, I was writing newspaper stories of intramural games and stuff like that. And I, I think actually when it comes to TV or radio, um, I used to play the, the old NHL 95 games on Sega Genesis. <laughs> and sometimes I would uh, I'd have a walkie-talkie. I was like 10 years old. I'd have a walkie-talkie from from where I was playing to my parents having breakfast and coffee in the kitchen and, and play by play of the games uh, while I was doing um, and and ever since then I knew uh, that's what I wanted to get into so um, I'd gone to college for a few years but it, the college I went to didn't really have uh, it, it wasn't for me and I ended up finding the Connecticut School of Broadcasting and I, I had an internship at it was Fox Sports New England at that point. It's now NBC Sports Boston, and and I, I loved every aspect of it. And months later, uh, I was uh, my internship had, had finished there, and I was selling Nextel cell phones and quite miserable <laughs> at my job. Uh, I went back to my school, Connecticut School of Broadcasting. Steve Williams was the president over there, and um, and he still is. And uh, I asked him, I. I'm desperate to find something that's TV related, and uh, he told me that the the Wellesley Channel was looking for play-by-play uh, -play -play announcers for some of their spring sports, and um, ended up doing a, a baseball game here uh, when it was run by Comcast at the time. And, and months later, I, I called back saying I was still interested in doing some stuff with the company. And James Joyce, the executive director, had answered. Uh, the current executive director answered the phone and, and said, well, we, we just completely restaffed over here, um, so you'll have to be retrained on all the equipment and everything like that. But, um, you know, did that. I volunteered here for a few months and then um, was offered a job as a sports producer here in the rest is history. First, we go to Tuesday night's boys basketball game against Needham, where second chance points played a big part. Here, Captain Michael Russell is able to grab the rebound and make the easy put in. Later in the first, guard Tim Lowe is able to find the sophomore Joel Pollock wide open for this three-pointer. Then on the other end, Michael Russell getting involved on D. Needham's Alex Schofield tries to go inside, but not with the big man underneath. And there would be more as on the ensuing inbound, Russell deflects the pass, and then his partner in the front court, Derek Witherford, swats another attempt inside. And Wellesley would take the lead into the half, 21-16. I, I thought when I first started here at the Wellesley Channel that sort of building the sports production uh, aspect of things here from the ground up was going to be impressive on a resume, but as it turned out, um, a lot of the jobs that I was applying for didn't really take uh, cable cable access production o overly seriously, and I, I felt like it was kind of holding me back and that I might end up being stuck. But I kept kind of plugging away, um, and then within, a first, uh, within my first, I, I think I'd been here for three years, two or three years, I... I was sitting at home watching TV one day and found a local golf course that was being profiled on this show called Golf, golf Destination that ran on Nesson. I, I contacted the guy, uh, you know, I did my research online to find out who produced the show and who do they employ and found out they, they had freelancers that worked on the show. So I asked him if I could be a, a PA for him and um, his name's Steve Icardi and he got me uh, my first uh, a couple of freelance gigs outside of the station, and then my first really, really big break uh, was shooting a Wellesley Little League game against Westwood in uh, the summer of 2010. And a couple weeks later, the Westwood coach had reached out, uh, was looking for um, a DVD of the game, and as it turned out, he was in the front office with the, Bel the Boston Celtics. And I gave him the DVD, and something I've done a million times before I asked him you know I've, I've been looking around and, and every now and then I check on your website to see if there's any job openings or anything like that and um, I hope you don't mind but I've included my resume and, and a link to my demo reel if anything ever happens to pop up and I didn't expect anything of it and as it turned out two or three months later uh, I was contacted by them to say they actually did have an opening for some video production stuff for Celtics.com and they would like to have me in for an interview and I ended up doing that for the next two years and um, made a ton of contacts through that job and it, it was great. It was uh, a great introduction to what working in sports production can be. My end goal was 
when I first had my internship at NBC Sports Boston, or it was then Fox Sports New England, it's now NBC Sports Boston, my end goal was to get back there at some point, and now I'm there. Um, I'm just part-time right now doing a few different jobs there, so I suppose that my end goal was to be full-time there at some point, but right now I, I love working part-time and freelancing and kind of having a variety of different jobs, um, but in the end I, I love to shoot and I don't really see myself wanting to ever move off of that. So uh, they keep me pretty happy over there. I, I love being out in the field and now seeing friends that I've made over the years on a routine basis that work at other stations and stuff. Um, and I, I just love my job being in the locker room after games. And it really, it, it's competitive. You know, you're constantly competing with sometimes five or six other news stations and, and sometimes as many as 20, 20 or 30 out of 20 or 30 other writers to stake out your position and get an interview with a guy in a locker room and uh, I've and being about five foot six it's <laughs> that's its difficulties of, of getting a good shot but uh, I've really turned that into a game in the last few years and and uh, I'm seeing my results getting better and I, I really enjoy doing that uh, I have plenty of memories from working here over the years I mean some of my favorite times of working here at the Wellesley Channel were when we used to produce Wellesley this week years ago. Um, we had a great staff at that that did turn over quite a bit over the years, but um, you know, between the talent that we had on air and the volunteers that would come in and help with the show and certainly the, uh, the production paid staff that we had here over the years, we had a lot of fun producing that show. And, you know, I'll, I'll uh, never forget the times. We were just talking about it. Uh, the, the two hours that came usually between 5 and 7 o'clock at night when we'd be done producing whatever packages we had for the week and then we'd move on to getting ready to produce the weekly show and we had just this cool down period where we would you know mess around with videos we were watching on YouTube and sometimes uh, mess around with each other too uh, uh, just I, I think to get a little, little relaxed before we got into producing the show and um, it was some of the funnest times I've ever had working in this industry and then uh, as a from a sports point of view of what we did here over the years I mean my my favorite run of any team was without a doubt the 2008 girls basketball championship run uh, I'd only been here for a little over a year at that point um, I, I knew that they were going to be a good team coming back but I didn't know quite what they were capable of and I remember covering their their second uh, tournament, second round tournament game of that season. They played Whitman Hanson who was supposed to be, uh, they had one of the top scorers in the state and they shut her down and held the team to 22 points and I, I saw somebody that uh, I was familiar with at the station after the game and I said, this team might win it all and sure enough they uh, blew through you know, Bishop Fian, Lincoln Sudbury, Walpole uh, all some of the top programs in the state on their way to the state title and um, it, it was a lot of fun uh, following them and you know that was the first game I'd ever covered at the Boston Garden and and off to the DCU Center after that and um, yeah over 10 years ago now that was but one of my favorite memories from my entire career uh, I guess I just want to say thank you to everybody in town that has uh, supported the station and come up to me during games and supported me uh, as I've, you know, was finding my footing as a, as a videographer and a producer. And um, I really appreciate everything that this town, this town opened a lot of doors for me and I made a lot of friends here over the years. And I think our, our sports coverage uh, has been pretty well received over the years by some people in town. And I've, I've always appreciated um, all the support we've had as a channel and, and uh, all the nice things everybody in town had to say to me over the years about our coverage here. And so, thank you. Really going to miss a lot of you guys. Well, thank you very much, Mike. I'm not sure how many people at home are going to take me very seriously with this whoopee cushion costume on, but just a happy Halloween to everybody. As we look at this week's sports report, we check in on the football team, who this week wrapped up a three-game homestand against the Braintree Womps. We also check in on the girls' volleyball team, who this past Wednesday took on the Natick Red and Blue.